Hi, Bethany. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Hey, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So we're, it's, today's May 4th and may the 4th be with everyone. <laughs> yes. Yes. Our whole community, may the 4th be with you. <laughs> yes. Uh, thanks for being a guest on the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Um, I'm looking forward to our conversation. I think it's a topic that we're going to have a really good conversation about. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what I would love to do to start is... Could you share a little bit with our listeners uh, what you're currently doing with your IHP certification? And then we can back it up and talk about a little bit about what you were doing before that, if it was different and how you got here. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you so much for having me on. I feel very honored to have been asked to come on here and just kind of share my story and what I've been doing. And um, I had found IHP um, last year. A friend of mine had posted that she had you know, done the certification and I thought, oh, that's interesting. And so I reached out to her and asked a bunch of questions, like a lot of questions Mm -hmm. and said, is this for anyone? Or do you have to have a degree? And I was looking for something because I was kind of going through a life change at the time. And, uh, this just resonated with me and I knew I had to do it. And so I had a friend that um, believed in me and uh, loaned me the money to start level one and level two. So I just hit the ground running and graduated Uh, level one and level two last year, and then decided to open up my practice of um, breaking health barriers. And so that's what I love to do is just to help people kind of break through the rut of trying to live optimally. Oh, that's great. Um, I love that you bring up that you had somebody loan you the money, right? I think that's so important for people who maybe are thinking about doing a certification or, you know, because sometimes finances can be Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, a sticking point for some people. And if you have somebody that has the means and like you said, believes in you asking for, you know, help and being able to to just get the start. Right. And Mm -hmm. once your business gets up and running, you can kind of pay them back and yeah, or help them with their health. Right. There's many ways to return the favor. (laughs) Yeah, no. And I, I definitely told her, I said, you're going to be my first client and I will help you for free. And he like, I'm, I'm very grateful that I had someone that really believes in me and, and could see me doing this and creating a career for myself and just helping other people. So that was, that was really good. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, what were you doing before that? Were you in the health and wellness space? Were you, you know, practicing kind of doing something similar or did you kind of fully switch gears from a career standpoint? Uh, Well, I definitely fully switched gears. I had been a stay-at-home mom and, um, you know, I'd had little part-time jobs here and there locally, but was always interested in the health field. Um, My own story, um, I've had alopecia since I was four, and I always knew that my own trauma had to be a contributive factor And, you know, my mom had always vehemently denied that. She said, oh, it was strictly physical. It was strictly physical. And so I kind of went on my own journey in 2019 to try to kind of find myself and uh, went to Rachel Hollis's RISE conference and thought, you know what, I think I'm going to ditch my wig and go to this conference with 7,500 other women and I'm just going to go bald. And so I did, I ditched the wig and it was very liberating. And, you know, you kind of get those flashbacks of elementary school of being teased. And I thought that would happen, but I was so supported. And a lot of women came up and said, you know, I just think you're beautiful. And that just gave me the confidence to kind of start down that path and then kind of start going through health and wondering, okay, how did this happen? And so IHP just showed up at such a wonderful timing. I do believe in God's timing is perfect for everything. And so that's kind of what got me into this business. Wow. That's yeah. Amazing. And it's sometimes just like, quote unquote, ripping the bandaid off, right? Mm -hmm. Making a decision that completely changes the trajectory of your life, right? There's, I think something symbolic about taking something off, right? Or Mm -hmm. removing something to kind of find a new layer of yourself. um, Yeah. That sounds like kind of, that was what you did there at the conference. Yeah. So I'm, interested as kind of we get into our little topic of the day, how much of your own experience um, dealing with trauma and your health and under, you know, undercovering the uh, underlying root stuff have you brought into your practice? Is that something that you believe is important with your own clients' healing journeys? 
Yeah, no, you know, I think most of us, we have clients that come to us, they're kind of like, you're their last hope. And they're, they're desperately kind of grasping at something to try to figure out why isn't what they're doing working. And so I, I love what Dr. Cabral teaches first off, which is that we test that way. We're not guessing. And I tell people, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't treat, diagnose, or cure. But what I am going to help you do is find those imbalances. And part of that imbalance is connecting the dots between your physical symptoms and your unresolved trauma. And we all have it. I think people tend to think that trauma is has to be this big trauma or a big T, as I like to call it. There can be a lot of little T's that happen. Um, not one of us go through life unscathed. Even if you have a great childhood, there are things little things like, you know, your best friend could have moved away and that could have been traumatizing to you. And so what I have found is there's just a big lack of awareness. And I think there's a big gap in health and wellness space that really maybe should be starting with those traumas. Cause I think once you can unlayer that and you can understand that emotions do get stored in the body, I think that that's so huge. So I do an exercise with my clients. Um, I had heard this from another colleague and I thought, oh, that's really cool. So I sat down, I did it myself and it was extremely eye opening. And what I do is I have a, a new client. Um, after our initial intake, I'll give them a little bit of homework. And I said, you know, this isn't something you have to report back to me. This is just for your own self-awareness. And I have them write their age. So I have them write zero all the way down to their age. So like I'm 43. So I would write zero, uh, one, two, three, four, all the way down to 43. And then in the next column, I have them write out their physical symptoms. Cause a lot of people, you know, they've had symptoms since they were kids, you know, they would have mm -hmm. digestive issues. That was me. Um, my mom thought I was allergic to all sorts of things. So there were lots of things I had to avoid. Um, and we didn't have yummy substitutions back in the eighties and nineties like we do now. So I think people are more fortunate now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in the next column, I have them write out all of those little traumas and even go back to asking their, their mother, Hey, what was your pregnancy life? What traumas and stressors were you going through? Because I think that that completely can set you up. Um, I know, I think for me, it had um, and so I think once people do that, I mean, I've had clients say, whoa, I had no clue. Cause then they can start to connect the dots and then it, it gives us a starting point. So I think self-awareness is a huge piece of it. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's a great, that's a great exercise because not only are they able to like mentally, right, go back and kind mm -hmm. of like recall and bring awareness to it, but they're able to also see it. And, mm -hmm. you know, what we don't, see, understand, we can't really go back and address or we yeah. can't, which is why labs, right? We're, we're quantitative. We believe mm -hmm. that quantitative results are helpful. And so why not have something in that same, you know, it's a quantitative um, exercise where somebody mm -hmm. can see like, okay, this is when all the stomach issues started. Well, that was mm -hmm. two years after you lost your grandmother or right. Like it's, it can be incredibly eye opening. Yeah. And do you, do you find that clients are um, open or hesitant at first? What's your, because I imagine there's probably like this pattern mm -hmm. where maybe there's like, you want me to do what? And then there's, yeah. so tell me a little bit about what you notice with clients. Yeah. You know, I think clients are actually, they're very open to it. I mean, it's definitely very different, but I think once I explain, you know, I, I try to tell people I'm like a, a health detective. I'm trying to, you know, I, I critically think, I think that's really important to learn to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people will believe mainstream media and this is brand new to them, but they are now open to hearing, uh, you know, different things. And so I think working with someone who's kind of at that start point, I think is actually good because I think they are more open. And especially when they come to you, they're like, you know, I'm desperate. I, I need help. And so when you bring up the aspect of emotions and stressors, just stress in general, because we all have stress, it's how you manage your stress. And I realize there's a lot of people, they do not know how to manage their stress at all because we're not taught how. So, and when you look at generationally, you will find that this is a generational problem. A lot of people are avoiders. They don't want to deal with their stuff. So if that's what was modeled to you, then you don't know how to handle any traumas or stressors that come into your life. So I find that clients are actually very open. It's a very eye-opening. 
And I tell them, you know, you may not get through this all in one sitting. You may need to come back or you may realize that, oh, that that triggered something that maybe needs to be dug into a little bit deeper. So I do find people, they're kind of like, oh, I never thought thought about that before. So, and I truly wish that, you know, cancer patients could go through these kind of exercises because I do think that that is such a, a missing piece of their healing journey. So, yeah. I completely agree. I'm I'm a big believer in that being a significant emotional emotionally driven disease. There's certainly, you know, mm-hmm. physical root causes, uh but yeah, I I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, the the truth is is it's it for some people who it's kind of their last stop, right? If it were me, I would find so much comfort in knowing like, okay, this is something I haven't done and mm-hmm doing something new and not just getting the same questions and going through the same process, right? Because you might think like, yeah. how is this going to get me a different result? But it's a different process, a different approach mm-hmm. that likely will lead uh, to to a different result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as far as the, I love that you bring up like, you know, trauma, I've talked about this on other episodes, but people think that, and even stress, I, I review mm-hmm. clients, um, labs with clients all the time. And I'll ask them what stress is like, like, right. The, their HTMA is showing stress off the charts, their cortisol is mm-hmm. through the roof. And they're like, Oh, mm-hmm. I'm like, not that stressed. And yeah, most like, people, fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and most people think that they have to have more stress mm-hmm. than the average person in modern day society to be stressed. I'm yeah. like, no, no, no. Everybody is stressed. How mm-hmm. are you managing it? Because that's important, right? How yeah. it manifests in the body depends on how you manage it. But just because everybody else is just as darn stressed as you are, doesn't mean that like it's okay and you're doing quote unquote fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think how people have have really identified with stress and trauma is, you know, the little stuff like doesn't matter and mm-hmm. it's got to be big for it to matter. Yeah. But the truth is, is just like the rain barrel effect with physical toxicities, like all that little Mm -hmm. stuff adds up and it's stored and it affects that central nervous system and how the body's able to create resiliency and whatnot um, is, in my opinion, a lot of people just kind of push that. Maybe it's the avoiders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Push that under the rug. (laughs) Yeah. Well, even, you know, a, a big turning point for me was learning about attachment theory. And, you know, I think, you know, and I do suggest to my clients, you know, I believe that every person should have a good therapist or a good counselor. You know, people think, oh, it's for, you know, you got to be crazy or you got to be way mentally down the path to be needing a counselor. But no, counseling is for everybody. And um, part of that process of taking that wig off, I I loved podcasts. I always listen to podcasts all the time. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to start my own podcast. So I did. And I've had amazing guests and even one of my reoccurring guests, he's a therapist himself. He's been in therapy for like 20 plus years. So I think it's, I think it's really important that people, um, get into therapy, have that third party neutral, not a friend or family member, because if you're steeped in that, those things that are stressing you out, such as abuse or anything like that, then you need someone to kind of have that outside perspective. But when I discovered attachment theory, that was huge. I'm, I'm an anxious attachment and it, it just kind of clicked with all my symptoms and my upbringing. And I could see where, oh, this is how I'm showing up in my relationships now. And that's causing more stress because I'm in this negative cycle with my partner. And so I think that, you know, getting into counseling is something I always recommend. I think it's great, especially if someone's coming to me and they're like at the brink of a a breakdown because they're just in pain or they're not getting better or they're not healing, you know, get into some counseling and find an attachment theory based counselor, because it will help you make sense of you. And I think the more someone can have self-awareness about themselves, how they're showing up, I think it can be like the light switch can go on for a lot of people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And just sometimes being able to like verbalize it, right? Like just Mm -hmm. talking can move the energy out of your system or getting to the point, my um, therapist, you know, she, she'll be like, so what's going on? And I'm a believer of it ongoing. Like I don't just show up when I need something. It's kind of what I do for maintenance. And it's always, she's like, ah, you thought today wasn't going to really be much, but it's always when I think I have nothing to talk about and I'll be talking, talking and all of a sudden I'll get choked up and I start crying. And she's like, there it is. 
So let's yeah. like dig what's what's under there. Um, she's a little bit more of like energetic, certainly, mm -hmm. um, you know, deals with attachment and whatnot, but it's always so interesting to, we all, there's always something that we can yeah. kind of be sorting through. And it's no different than like, we say, oh, peel back the layers with physical stuff, right? Like, okay, parasites and mold and yeast and candy. It's no different yeah. with the emotions. Yeah. And I always say, I think I'll be in quote unquote therapy forever mm -hmm. yeah. because it's what, like, it's, it's just the journey. I'm not looking to get somewhere specific because if I'm living, I probably need mm -hmm. someone to bounce, you know, stuff off of. Yeah. And I tell my clients, I say, you know, this journey, not, you know, first off, I don't want to keep you as a client forever and ever and ever, because then I'm not doing a good job. But mm -hmm. I said, this is going to be a journey. And I don't think, I personally don't believe that any one of us is going to absolutely arrive and then be able to go on with our life. I, I tell people, you're like an onion and you're going to start peeling back all of these layers. And then every layer you uncover, you're going to have some more work to do. And, and so, you know, I kind of think of it like parenting. I don't know how many of you know the listeners or parents out there, but if you are, you can totally <laughs> relate to this. Once you think you've mastered one age, then they get older. And then it's like, oh, it comes with an all new set of things, um, especially teenagehood. I, I have a 14 year old now and it's like, oh, wow. Okay. I was not expecting this. So I just tell people, you got to be gentle. You got to have grace with yourself. You got to just accept this is going to be a process because as I started on my health journey, I started to realize, oh, I had, um, because I was adopted, I had that physical separation. So it probably put my body automatically into the cell danger response. And then, you know, they were feeding me barley water the first six months of my life. So that probably destroyed my gut. And then I moved to an area of the United States that's very prevalent for mold. So it's like, when you start to realize all these layers, it's the same thing with healing. You're going to have different layers and you're going to go through the different emotions. Cause even as I've learned my own history, there's times that I get upset, like, well, why didn't my mom know? Why didn't, why didn't I know this? You know, I got a bunch of mercury fillings at 19. I had no clue that they were terrible for your health. So I think there's just, you know, I tell people, this is going to be a process. You're going to be like an onion. You got to peel it back. And you got to just give yourself grace and that it's not linear. You're going to take 10 steps forward and maybe two steps back and then maybe 20 steps forward and then 30 steps back. So you just got to be patient and realize the joy of this is the journey itself. It's not trying to get to Z at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I find that mo a lot of clients can understand that. And then it's my type A clients who are like, no, 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 just give me a yeah. task. <laughs> I need a task. Yeah. I'm going to finish it. I need to get to the finish line and then I'm good. Right. And those mm -hmm. are usually the people that need the most emotional support. Right. Cause their perfection is kind of tied into all sorts yeah. of other trauma responses and whatnot. Um, yeah, but yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And I also, the, the attachment thing is so fascinating in the sense that it, it does wire the nervous system in a very mm -hmm. specific way. I see it with, I have three kids and yeah. they're all, I, their differences I can mm -hmm. tell are very specific to one, the mother I was when I was pregnant with them and yes. two, the mother I was when they were born. Mm -hmm. It's just, and I think that sometimes it comes out in birth order um, for a lot of kids because a lot of moms tend to have similar, right? Um, yeah. Some, my third is, he's sweet as pie. He's super well, like he's just like, you can tell that he's not wired to be very rigid. And mm -hmm. whereas like my son from a few weeks old, I could tell he was just like tight as tight could be. Well, I was a nervous wreck when I was pregnant with him. I had yeah. so much stress. The third, he was a surprise. I was so delighted. I mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's my, very different. Yeah. And how I was able to bond with him was entirely different. How I was able to bond with my son. He mm -hmm. ended up at, you know, a daycare 10 weeks after I had him, this one's been home with me, right? There's yeah so much. And I've had to give myself certainly some grace because now that I can see it so clearly, I feel guilty for what my son was mm -hmm. never able to get. Right. Um, yeah. and, but you, it's all part of the process and mm -hmm. he isn't going to come out of life unscathed and neither will the third he'll have something yeah. that comes up too yeah. um but we have to be give ourselves grace but also like you said kind of finding some sort of 
um, peace with what what's kind of happened in our past is really a, a big part of of processing the trauma. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. And no, I think I think definitely. You know, just even even for me too, because I have that layer of adoption and I've always kind of wondered, I've always had a a tumultuous relationship with my parents and especially having that abuse at age four definitely added another layer of complication to all of that. But, um, you know, I, I do this work because I want to break that generational cycle. Mm -hmm. And my hope is to find other people within my breaking health barriers community of people that want to say like the buck stops with me, but that's going to take a, a level of bravery and courageousness to be able to face yourself. And I've always heard, you know, people think being a good parent means parenting, but it really means to reparent yourself because your kids are going to model everything that you've modeled. And I, I can see it. I can see it where my 14 year old definitely has gotten the brunt of my unhealing where my six year old as I have become aware for most of her life, she is going to be in a different space. And so I think that that's where that grace comes because it's very easy as a parent to beat yourself up thinking, oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. And how could I have not known? But I think just learning that it's, you're always going to be on this path of growth. And I think a lot of people are not aware that they're even on a path. So I think bringing something like IHP or working with an IHP coach can be huge because it can create this, the spark of self-awareness. And then you can actually maybe change the trajectory of that client's entire generational lineage from here on out. So I always, you know, my kids are my why that is the reason that I'm able to face myself. And, you know, sometimes it is not pretty. I mean, I had, a couple of days ago, just going through a big life change and I was feeling down and, you know, my best friend was just like, you know, you have to forgive yourself. You, you did what you knew how to do. You were in survival mode and you just, you keep going and you're doing it and you've made such good progress over the last three, four years, just keep going. So, you know, I think also having a supportive team around you is really important to your healing too. Like look at who is in your environment. And if there are people on your bus that are not in your corner and are supporting you and encouraging you on this path, they're actually being detrimental, remove them from the bus and make space for people that will do that for you. So Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when kids are old enough and and I did it even when they were younger too, in certain ways, but letting them see that, yeah, you, you're not this perfect mom. You, you can fall apart and maybe you do things that you wish you didn't say, you know, you wish you didn't say or do and, and repairing and showing them yeah. that, that that process is okay. None of us are striving for, or we can't be perfect. The truth Mm -hmm. is, is how we move forward after we have episodes of whatever Mm -hmm. is the most important part in teaching them that, you know, humility, I think is so, so important. Yeah. And I think too, you know, it's important even as us health coaches and people that are in the health and wellness space, because I even, I'll find the extreme where clients are like so stressed out. They're trying to eat perfectly and they're trying to do this perfectly. And I'm like, you have to find a balance because if you tip the scale too far over and you're just in this perfection mode, you're actually causing yourself way more stress than if you just indulged, you know, once a week in a treat that you enjoy, maybe it's a gluten-free piece of cake instead of, you know, regular chocolate cake. But, you know, if you stress yourself so much, that actually is doing more damage than just accepting that this is a process and it's a journey. And I think sometimes I have even felt in the health and wellness space that I do have to be perfect perfect, even as a health coach. And someone actually mentioned that the other day, like, well, you know, I'm not really sure you're a health coach and, you know, I'm I'm sure you're perfect. I said, oh no, no, I am not perfect. You know? And, um, I think it's almost impossible because we live in such a toxin filled world. I mean, we're bombarded, you know, through our air and our water and our food and our, you know, pharma system and body care, dental care, housekeep, house cleaning supplies. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. So, it's that awareness of, Hey, I can make better choices and I'm not always going to make the right choice, but it's okay. And I can just, Oh, Hey, I didn't make the right choice. I bought that cleaner and it had this toxin in it, but next time I can swap it out for this. 
So I think it's really important, even as health coaches, to get your clients to understand this is not going to be a perfect process. And that's not the goal. The goal is for you to live optimally so you can experience joy and happiness and fulfillment with your life. Yes. And just making a little bit of a better decision every time, right? Maybe mm-hmm. it's yeah. you do something better every year, or every month, or tomorrow you wake up and do this, you know, a little bit differently and never thinking that you need to overhaul, you know, a toxic life to a perfect life. I have mm-hmm. people say all the time to me, like, oh, you're a health coach. Like, do you, do, they, do your kids eat, you know, can your kids have a cupcake? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> my kids can have a cupcake. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not. <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's one of those things where I think it takes a level of comfort with yourself too, right? Because I sometimes question myself. I'm like, well, if they think a health coach should be like eating and be everything, maybe I should be a little bit more, you know, diligent Mm -hmm. or whatnot. But I think that thoughts, rigidity, like all of that stress that can come from trying to maintain an image, that can be toxic. Mm -hmm. Um, just as much as more toxic, in my opinion, honestly, than like the gluten or the cleaning products, um, Mm -hmm. because those thoughts are what, what, what create, yeah, the environment inside. Yeah. And I mean, there are some clients that I know right off the bat, I'm not going to be able to help because their mindset alone, you know, I, I just think the mind is so powerful and, you know, it matriculates not only, do the emotions, you know, our bio engineered, you know, chemically engineered in our bodies, but our thoughts really kind of run a lot of that. So, I mean, if there's just people that are not in that space, which is, I think as a health coach to be aware of what your ideal client is and having that boundary for yourself, because I think it's easy as a health coach, you want to help everyone. I mean, I, I am very justice gifted and I look at the system and how broken it is and all this stuff that I've learned over three, four years. I'm like, why do people not know this? Like a lot of people I tell them about biodex, they don't even know what that is. So it's like, you know, I have this justice. I, I want to save everybody. Um, but I've had to learn, okay, I've got to set boundaries. I got to have an ideal client. And I want to work with people that are in the mindset of, okay, I'm ready to do the work and I'm not looking for the easy way. Like just tell me X, Y, and Z and I'll be better. It's, Hey, I want someone that's going to accept that this is a process. Yes. Yeah. So if some, if a new coach is listening and you know, they're like, Ooh, yeah, actually I need to do that. How, I wonder how she does that. What do you typically do? You kind of just, you know, have a application process do, because I, I believe this is so important too, right? Because you're actually allowing them to go find a practitioner who mm-hmm. probably would specialize in the ability to help them differently, right? Your approach may mm-hmm. not align um, because they might still be in like a victim mindset or not ready to do some of the work that you believe is beneficial. Um, how do you do, how do you go about it? Yeah, I mean, I I definitely, you know, I'll do like a discovery call and then I kind of go through a series of questions, you know, and I'll ask them, you know, on a scale from one to 10, one being like, eh, you know, I'm willing to kind of take your suggestions and maybe do something with it to 10. Like I am ready to do the work and you, you guide me. Like I trust you. And I think that's also an important thing too, is you have to build trust and rapport and have that skill of being able to connect to your clients because at the end of the day, that's really what every single person is wired for is to find connection. That's why I feel attachment theory is so powerful for you to understand yourself and how you attach to your caregivers, because we're all looking for that connection. So to connect to your client, asking them a lot of questions, being curious about them, you know, wanting to know about their childhood, not just the current stressors, but what were things like for you as a kid? Uh, what was your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your siblings, with extended family members, your friends, those kind of things. So it's, you know, walking through that discovery process, figuring out, okay, what are the, what are their health goal, goals? What are the things that they're dealing with? What are their symptoms that they, you know, are experiencing? And um, three is to um, connect to them and figure out and be curious about them. Because I think when people start to feel like people take a vested interest in them, then they're going to be more open with you. And so, you know, you can kind of tell the clients that are a little more reserved and maybe aren't going to be as open to the process, but then you find people that will like, you know, it's like 
going to the barber shop and just, that just spills everything. So I think you can kind of gauge a client and their willingness and their openness to things as you just be curious about them. Yeah, I think that's a, a great process. Um, if people are listening and they want to kind of connect more, find out more about you, where are all the places that you show up, um, websites, social media, any of that stuff? Um, well, right now I am currently putting together a website. Um, I originally wasn't going to do that just because I'm great at just networking, but then I thought, oh, I should probably do that. So, but for now people can find me on Instagram and my handle is at breaking health barriers. And I'm also on Facebook under Bethany Branson and, um, and then also my podcast is called totally exposed, real, raw, and authentic. And there's a lot, I go over all sorts of personal development, uh, topics there. I love health and wellness. So you will find a majority of it is health and wellness stuff, but I do a lot of stuff on trauma and attachment. And we talk about, you know, spiritual things and, um, you know, I really like to kind of expose the truth about a lot of stuff. And so kind of all bets are off when you're listening to my podcast. So people can definitely find me there as well. That's great. Thank you so much for being a guest on the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Uh, I enjoyed this so much and I appreciate you sharing everything that you did with our listeners. Thank you so much. I've had a really good time and um, I just want to encourage everyone to, you know, keep going the path. You know, there's going to be days you want to give up even as a health coach, um, but just keep going. And, you know, hindsight, when you look back a couple of years from now, you're going to say, wow, I've really come a long ways. So Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Bethany. We'll talk soon. All right. Thank you.